always on the lookout for more opportunities to soak up more specialist knowledge. Drew's decided it's time to make a 250 mile journey across the breadth of England to Walsingham. So today we are going to Holt Antique Furniture in Norfolk. Um, we're meeting a guy called Robin, specialist dealer in early, primitive, naive, Jacobean, Carolean, early George, first, second, third, the lot. Has he got all the Georges? He's got all the Georges and everything that came before, yeah. Highly specialised stuff, highly specialised area of the antiques business can be very expensive. But he's based in an incredible old village as well and he's in a beautiful old building and he's got fabulous old things so I thought well we've got to go and have a look at that haven't we? Can't not. Can't not. In 1061, visions of the Virgin Mary were seen in the Norfolk village of Walsingham, and it became one of the great shrines of medieval Christendom, known as England's Nazareth. This ended with the Reformation, but by the 18th century, Walsingham was flourishing again, this time as a market and centre for law administration. Today, in a building where corn was once ground by prisoners walking on 19th century treadmills, is an extraordinary collection of antiques, curated by self-taught dealer Robin Dunkley. I've been doing this full-time for about the last 10, 11 years. When I first started, I had enough money for six pieces of stock. But now, as you can see, the shop is completely full, specialising items from the 15th century through to the early 19th century. People love coming into the shop. They tell me that it's like walking into a museum. It's been good fun to have Drew and T here today. Just looking forward to seeing what his thoughts are on the shop and see if we'll all come out winning. Hello. Hi. Drew, Drew pleased to meet you. Please feel free to have a browse this and see is what a you think. Proper antique shop. Thank you. Wow. I'm Tea. glad you like it. Look at this. Thank you. My God. So everything that you see in here dates between the 15th century and early 19th century. I have okay. a preference for early oak and country furniture. Yeah. Fine art and decorative items. Well, I think today I'm going to let you teach me. OK. This is very specialised. So I'm not going to embarrass myself. I'm going to let you lead me. OK. Today we are at uh, Holt Antiques at Walshingham Mill and we're in this staggeringly good antique shop. We are in an antique shop of world class. I can't tell you how hard it is to put this collection like this together. It's difficult, it's expensive, it's time consuming and it takes knowledge. Lots of knowledge. How did you get into doing this? Uh, well, from the age of four, which is a strange sort of age to get into antiques. Uh, my grandmother used to give me the equivalent of 30p a week in the early 70s. Yeah. And I used to save five pounds and she'd take me to an antiques fair. I collected little bits of railway armor yeah. as a youngster. And then from there, it was just a total love. This takes some doing. Most of this is like museum standard. Thank you. I mean, I do sell to museums and I do sell to uh, other institutions as well. I need to spend, like, a week in here, really. Most people tell me that when they come. Yeah. So, again, early portraits, some with great provenance from country houses, through to wax portraits. There's even one of Lord Nelson and two other English admirals as well. Really? What's a wax portrait of Nelson worth? About 500-ish pounds, something like that. That's a load of history there, isn't it, for not much money? Mm. I, I can appreciate every single thing that's in this building. It's exceptionally good. I'm always trying to find that bit where the customers that come to me it fit into their world. God, look at that. Some stuff in here just won't. You know, it just doesn't. But what I've got to do is find a piece that will span those two worlds of this world and my world. And that's what I'm trying to find today. And then I'm drawn again to that chair. That's gorgeous. Can we get that out? Yeah, of course we can, yeah. Yeah. That's a beautiful chair. God. The problem, I shouldn't be saying all this, should I, really? But I'm giving, I'm giving the game away. Wow. You know. Yes, but, you know, Norfolk's best-kept secret, I am, apparently. <laughs> you wear. <laughs> OK. okay. <laughs> God, that's good. Look at the scale of that. That's absolutely sensational. The surface on it is fabulous. 
somebody who had refinement, somebody with was, was of incredible wealth to have that chair at the time, mm. and probably of wide girth as well, I would imagine. It was a big fella. Correct. I have to fall in love with something today, because I'm buying at the upper end of this type of antique. And we found it. There's a chair over there. Um, extraordinary. Uh, it ticks every box. It's that strange mix of, of sophistication from the town with a little bit of country thrown in. Then it's that thing which I adore. It's incredibly original. Then you've got the original paint. You've got the overall scale. The side profile is particularly good. It has it all. Windsor chairs are thought to have become fashionable in the 18th century, when aristocratic gardens turned from formal spaces to places where tea might be taken and lightweight portable chairs were needed. The Thames Valley around Windsor and Slough was home to a concentration of skilled makers, although little is known about the individual artisans based there. This example dates from around 1800 and has an unusual level of carving detail, such as the subtle ankle on each of the cabriolet legs. It could be worth around 2,200 pounds. So it's 2450. I just wondered how, how much pain you can take on it. Where do you want to be is the question. We're a world away. I don't need to make lots of money, but I do need to make something. I'll stand over here. Don't upset you too much. <laughs> as long as you're not within thumping distance. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm just out of range. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it's the sort of thing I'd like to pay a maximum of 1,500 pounds for. Mm. Um, 1500 wouldn't buy it because it's what I paid for it. 1700. It's a fabulous thing. <sighs> Exploring a highly specialised collection of rare early pieces in Norfolk. Wow, most of this is like museum standard. Thank you. Drew's fallen for a unique example of a Windsor chair that's way out of his price range. So it's two four fifty. It's the sort of thing I'd like to pay a maximum of fifteen hundred pounds for. Mm. Um, fifteen hundred wouldn't buy it because it's what I paid for it. Seventeen hundred. It's a fabulous thing. <sighs> seventeen hundred pounds. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank, thank you. you. Very much. You won't regret it. £1,700 for all of that history. It's at least, it's at least 220 years old, minimum. And it survived up till now. It was a beautiful, expensive thing when that was made. And it still is. When you come to specialists like Robin, that's what you want. You know, he's a specialist and he is where he is because there's a reason behind it, and that's knowledge. God, I've just spotted that as well. Look at that. Yeah, so... <gasps> Wow! So the, the, check this out. Look at this. Look at the face of that. So the pew end uh, came from St Mary's Church at Cambridge. Yeah. Wow. Um, that's, that's absolutely beautiful. You know, but the uh, Gothic revival. I'm a bit. I'm. 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 I'm taken aback, to be honest with you, because the standard of what you have here is just so damn good. Thank you. There was one other thing as well that I liked, and they've got this little cast iron door porter. Oh, okay. There, yeah, yeah. I'll bring it over. Okay. But it looks slightly... I mean, obviously, as soon as you pick up cast iron, you think, oh, you know, mid to late 19th century, but this one looks a little bit earlier It than is, that. yeah. Yeah, it is slightly earlier. Another thing that I've seen here is this wonderful cast iron door porter. People call them door stops. I like door porter. It usually pertains to a piece that has a rod and a handle above it that you can move it around to keep the doors open or closed. It's great. It has this strange look to the face which goes back to the sort of... Uh, 16th and 17th century English interpretations of what a lion would look like. You'll often see it looks more humanoid than animalistic. And it's a nice scale, and it's it's buyable. So what are you asking for that? 200 would be the best on it. Oh, I'm going to take him home for 200 quid. OK. What a great thing. Wonderful. You know, we end up getting it for 200 quid. Well, if I can make 25 quid on it, or 30 quid, or 40 quid, or 50 quid, great. You know, is it worth 295? Yes. Thank you. Right. Okay. Great. I think we're done. Excellent. I think we're done. Thank you very much. I would happily buy everything in your shop. It's, uh, it's an educated, sophisticated palette of stuff you have here. Very, very good. Thank you. 
What can I say? In this business, every day is a school day, and, and today was. Because what happens when you come to a shop like this, you sort of... It, it soaks into you. You want to put yourself in the way of things, so you will learn. I also bought, you know, something extraordinary. That chair, it's the best of something. And I'm always going on about, you know, in this business we can buy the best of things, and you don't often get to do that in life. I've absolutely loved today meeting Drew and T, teaching him about a few things. He's taught me about a few things as well. Nice to have done a couple of deals. It's just been a fantastic experience from the start to the finish today. Well, that was that was a lesson. It was. It's like being that in a was museum, a wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very good. One of the most educated collections of antiques I've seen in a long time. It's always really good as well if I could meet somebody who's a specialist in their area that I can ring up, basically. Yeah. And I think we made friends. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good. An excellent call. Amazing. Fabulous dealer. This takes some doing. Most of this is like museum standard. Thank you. I mean, I do sell to museums and I do sell to uh, other institutions as well. I need to spend like a week in here, really. Most people tell me that when they come. Yeah. So again, early portraits, some with great provenance from country houses, through to wax portraits. There's even one of Lord Nelson and two other English admirals as well. Really? What's a wax portrait of Nelson worth? 
about 500-ish pounds, something like that. That's a load of history there, isn't it, for not much money? Mm. I, I can appreciate every single thing that's in this building. It's exceptionally good. I'm always trying to find that bit where the customers that come to me will fit into their world. God, look at that. Some stuff in here just won't. You know, it just doesn't. But what I've got to do is find a piece that will span those two worlds of this world and my world. And that's what I'm trying to find today. And then I'm drawn again to that chair. That's gorgeous. Can we get that out? Yeah, of course we can, yeah. Yeah. That's a beautiful chair. God. The problem, I shouldn't be saying all this, should I really? But I'm giving, I'm giving the game away. Wow. You know. Yes, but you know, Norfolk's best kept secret, I am, apparently. <laughs> you wear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God, that's good. Look at the scale of that. That's absolutely sensational. The surface on it is fabulous. Somebody had refinement, somebody with was, was of incredible wealth to have that chair at the time. Mm. And probably of wide girth as well, I would imagine. It was a big fella. Correct. I have to fall in love with something today because I'm buying at the upper end of this type of antique. And we found it. There's a chair over there. Um, extraordinary. Uh, it ticks every box. It's that strange mix of, of sophistication from the town with a little bit of country thrown in. Then it's that thing which I adore. It's incredibly original. Then you've got the original paint, you've got the overall scale, the side pro.